Welcome back to Robbie Minds. As I promised before the break, we do have a doctor in the house and he's going to be educating us on meningitis. We have Dr. Samuel Okirinde, who is also a health educator and trainer. Thank you for joining us on Robbie Minds. Thank you for having me. So meningitis, I mean, in medicine or in healthcare, they say prevention is better than cure. But after 438 deaths, we're now seeing that mass immunization. Our hope today is that you're going to share with us a lot of information so that our viewers will not be in this position of getting into trouble because of meningitis. We don't want anybody to die again to add to that horrible statistic. So what is meningitis in layman English? Okay, thank you very much. When we talk about meningitis from the word meninges, um, when we look at the brain and the spinal cord, there are some membrane that covers the brain up to the um, spinal cord. So when we talk about inflammation or infection of those meninges, they are called meningitis. So it's basically infection or inflammation, more like swelling of those things is what we call them, what we call meningitis. And there are so many things that can cause it actually. Um, we talk about from bacteria to virus to fungi to parasites. So you're saying we have bacterial, viral, uh, parasitic, which is the most common in Nigeria? Um, normally when we even talk about uh, meningitis, we more like talking about the bacterial meningitis. The bacterial meningitis, that's the commonest one we, we talk about, like the outbreak we're talking about now, caused by Nicerian meningitis. So the bacteria, so whenever we talk about meningitis, we are referring to bacterial meningitis, but there are other causes. Um, even um, cancer, some cancer could you know, could go to the to the, to the brain and affect the men and the meninges, and we have meningitis. Some drugs too. I mean, so that's meningitis. Anything can cause inflammation. Anything? Yeah, anything from infectious to um other things. Even in, uh, when when somebody has injury injury to the brain, and then there's you can also have um trauma can also give you meningitis. Can cause the meninges to be inflamed. Okay, so like if you have a head injury, so head maybe injury. participation in physical sports yeah. can lead to meningitis? Yeah, once there is a, maybe there's a fracture and then anything from outside gets to the meninges. Normally the meninges is meant to be um, aseptic, I mean it's, not supposed to, it's, it's supposed to be sterilized or something like that. So any foreign body that gets to that place can cause inflammation. Okay, so how can we protect ourselves against meningitis? Okay, so we want to talk about um, protection against which of the, is it the common one we're talking yes, about? Yes, the bacterial the one bacteria. that's okay. affecting us right now in Nigeria. All right. So we start, um, basically we start from the, what we call the primary prevention in public health, which is, which is like I said, prevention is better than cure. So um, we want to avoid those things that can cause us to have the infection. So overcrowding, okay, um, poor housing system, okay. Um, Poor hygiene. Okay, so when we talk about overcrowding, we need to avoid overcrowding. Um, we need to avoid um, poor, uh, for example, a house that is not well ventilated. We expect that minimum a house should have two windows, cross ventilation. But when you see some houses in Nigeria now, if it's well in the north, you find out some houses don't even have windows at all. And people live there. You have an average room should take about two people. So once you have more than two or three or four people, then you're already having. Um, overcrowding and that can also predispose people to having um, meningitis. So we start by saying prevent overcrowding, good hygiene, um, then most importantly we want to go to the next one which is vaccination, vaccination. which is very very important. I remember as a child having the vaccine. I think I was in school then and we just heard about spinal meningitis and I think it's a very painful injection. I can't remember now, but it was very popular in the 90s getting that vaccine. So I'm surprised it's all of a sudden come up again. What would you say has resulted in this reemergence of meningitis? Okay, um, one thing to also note about this um, meningitis and um, this bacterial meningitis, which is the commonest one, the Nicera meningitis, is that it is seasonal. Uh, yeah, usually in the dry season it comes up. Now, why? Because during the dry season, that's when you have more of an upper respiratory tract infection, and then the nystagmus the is usually found in the nose and the throat, um, especially what we call carriers. Carriers are those people that have the infection but they don't show the signs. And according to studies, say about 10 to 20 percent of those people of carriers. But in epidemic situation, we can have them getting as well as 35 percent of them. And so once you get in contact with them and either they sneeze or through droplets, 
then you you, you can so get it. So if someone is not showing the symptoms of meningitis, how do you know this person has meningitis or this person doesn't have meningitis? Yes, that's one of the reasons why um, um, those diseases usually are, are really, really tough to deal with because you really don't know. Carriers, they don't know. They might be looking good, they are smiling at you, but once it gets to that point, it's really what favors them, the, um, the dry season, then they just begin to they just begin to share it. Once the person sneezes or there's a deep kissing and there's this um, exchange of all these um, throat um, secretions, then the person, especially the person that is not immunized or have low um, immu or immunocompromised, like someone has HIV, all those things, then the person comes down with the street. Then we have what called clinical case. Now, clinical case, we, we have between two, between three to four days, and that's when the person starts coming forward with the symptoms that we talked about. We talk about um, neck stiffness, which is the commonest. The person comes up with severe headache. Apart from headache, the person has um, unnecessary sensitivity to light, can't just see light or sound. Okay, then some of them vomit, and then once you start seeing those symptoms, especially what we call the meningitis um, belt. In sub they are about from, I think, from the east in Utopia to the west in Senegal. Nigeria, if you look at the, 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 the map, the parts of, um, of the of Nigeria part that really fall under the meningitis belt are the northern part, so the northwest, the north. That's why you have most of those cases happening in the, in the northern region. So what do you do when you see that case, generally? And you see those symptoms, um, neck thickness, you try to move the neck and the person has severe Sensitivity pain. to the light. To okay, light. so still on the vaccination. Okay. I mentioned I got vaccinated. I'm sure you two also got... Sincerely, I can't remember. Okay, <laughs> so when can people take this vaccine? Is this something you take as a baby, a child, or even into your 50s, 60s? Um, commonly, the people that are usually affected with meningitis are children, young children, and then maybe young adults also. And then people who have not been to uh, maybe sub-Saharan Africa before, or people who are going to places like Mecca where you have over um, overcrowd, you have so many people. So um, they, they can get it anywhere. You walk into any health facility if you're not sure you've had it before, and they just give you a dose. And the funny thing that they are not that expensive, funny enough. So they go, you go there without your. Not that expensive is how much? Uh, I really can't say. If you go to some um, private um, cleaning, the price might differ from. From government, also, but generally in government hospitals, they are usually cheaper. Okay. Um, but what I was, I was hearing recently is that it's even free. Okay, so is it advisable for people who are coming from outside the country and they're going to some of these areas you identify to take that meningitis sure. vaccine? Sure, they should. They should. Okay. They should. They have to. And is it available all over the world or it's more concentrated in places that actually have reported cases? Okay, um, I think I should also say this, that um, the, the one, the strain we have now is, is, is type C. There are actually about 12 serotypes that have, been, um, that have been identified. And then six out of it has the capacity to cause um, the epidemics. Like the one we see in Africa generally that causes epidemics is the type A. But currently we're having the type C. And the vaccine that we've been given in Nigeria has been the type A over, over time. So it's, it's new to us, it's strange, you know. So, for people coming in, even if you have, if you have the, a, the A vaccine, it's advisable that you should go and get the type C vaccine. So it's, it's, it's encouraged, it's advised. Okay. One of the ways you said that meningitis is transmitted is through kissing, through exchange of body fluids. Yeah. So would you say Governor Yari is saying that God is trying to punish Nigerians, maybe as a result of fornication, mm. immoral activities, is there some scientific basis to that? Because if people are not kissing and fornicating, then the spread of meningitis will not continue. Okay, I'm all in night. According to <laughs> Governor Yari. Uh, I'm not a fan of um, Governor Yari, but I want on a lighter note, I think there might be some form of sense in it. Okay, they said God, um, cleanliness is next to godliness. Um, like we said, some of those things that can really favor the transmission of those things is poor hygiene, poor housing. You know, so we but here we're talking about moral issues. Yeah, but, but I, I don't know. Is God, are you saying God is going to punish people for not being clean? Or God is punishing people I, I want for to, if, I, if I want to toe the line of Governor Yari, if I want to toe that line, now maybe the gods are angry because we're not doing the right thing.